Hello everybody and welcome to a little video, so this might be a bit late, the Nano has been out for quite a long time, but I'm going to do a little uh, video to prove that I have Nano, there it is, currently in my system, here we have afterburner settings, I don't know if you can see that clearly. Either way, the settings are stock. 1000 MHz core clock, 0 plus power limit, memory clock is... Uh, ah, there we go, 500. Also, apologies, I'm using my phone. And also another thing, this isn't my usual content, but... I want to cover this. And here we have a fire strike, which I'm going to set up. Oh, also, specs. Also, apologies for me messing up, this is the first time I do this. So the reason for me doing this is because on some of my YouTube comments and on uh, some subreddits, AMD, hardware, probably as well PC Master Race, there have been some comments that uh, R9 Nano thermal throttles, and there were some reviews that also claimed it, like JZ Two Cents review said that the R9 Nano thermal throttles. So, granted, I have. Um, I live in Norway, so it's a bit colder here than usual, than other countries. Uh, but I have a stock Nano. Also to keep in mind though is, I have a custom water loop, and in the front I have a 360mm um, radiator as intake, pulling in air from the outside into the case, cooling my FX8320. The Nano is not part of the loop, as you saw it was air cooled. And I have, admittedly, I have quite a few apps open. But I believe that won't matter. If people request me to redo with all the apps closed, I can do so upon request, but I'm being lazy now. So yeah, the plan is to do two runs. One run where we take Fire Strike on stock settings. Actually, three runs on stock settings. So no increased power limit, no overclock or anything. Second run, we'll do increased uh, power limits only. Third one, we will do overclocked, and we'll see how the core clocks are across all three runs. And I'll be using MSI Afterburner, which is my preferred overclocking software. My R9 Nano at max, I have, usually I run it at 1040 megahertz and 50% power limit, and it's custom fan curve. Of course, the fan curve, as you can see, is not custom right now. So, this is the test. I'll be doing Fire Strike Extreme. Also, I'm very sorry for my shoddy, shoddy um, what's it called? Recording, but it's how it is. So, I'll run uh, maybe 10 minutes of this and then I'll uh, be back so one thing to keep in mind I don't know why this happens but the second screen turns black during fire strike and fire strike alone I don't know why it happens it doesn't happen with any other game so I can't monitor it live granted but I can always watch the graph after it's finished and I'll return as soon as fire strike is finished and then I'll do the results for the stock so as you can see, it's going now, and I'll be back in a bit. This has been going on for 10 minutes, roughly. So this was completely stock on the R9 Nano. So let's us exit, and let's see. If we go to the right here, allow my thing to focus. I hope you can see the numbers. Come on, focus. Don't you fail on me now. There we go. 900. About 910, 20. Between, let's say 900. And GPU usage was usually 100 with some dips. Fan speed presented 41 on stock. Temperature all the way on top, 74. So, now, uh, if this was completely right, if uh, the theory that the R9 Nano thermal throttles 
At this stage, the R9 Nano would have... Uh, well, we would have seen this re result if it thermal throttled, or if it uh, power limit power throttled. So that's why we're here. We're going to check if it's thermal throttling or power throttling. So, go to the power limit slider, increase to 50, apply, and let's run this test again. Fire Strike Extreme. I also changed to Graphic Test 2 because it was a bit longer. And I'll loop it for another 10 minutes. And then uh, we'll go check the results. As you can, okay, it's too late now, but as you could see, still 1000 MHz core clock and 500 MHz on the HBM memory. So I'll be back in, for me, 10 minutes. And after that, we'll see the results, and then I'll test overclocked. And if my theory is right, right now it should stick to 1000 MHz, although the temperature should be higher, because uh, higher core clocks means higher voltages and higher temperatures as a result. But, uh, but the core clocks will be 1000 MHz, if I'm right. If I'm wrong, it should throttle. So we'll see now, and yeah, I'll be back soon. Hello everybody, okay, so I'm back. Let's see, let's escape this. Now in theory, the clock should be at a thousand. And if I focus in, come on, focus. Stop with the tooltips. I need to check if I can turn that off. Come on, focus. Is it properly focused? There we go. You can see some dips. It goes down to 940 is the lowest. However, temperatures are about 4 degrees higher, and the clocks are about 800 megahertz or so average higher. So, there can be two reasons for this, which I can think. It wasn't thermal throttling before, and it is now, or it's still power limit limited. But either way, it's less power limited than it was before. But the thermal is also increased by 4 degrees, so it's entirely possible that it's thermal throttling. I don't know at what level the, the R9 Nano thermal throttles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two more tests. And I'm going to reduce the power level back to zero. I'm going to turn off auto fan. Oops, not user defined. Put it to 100%. So what my theory is, and I'm going to do another one with 50 um, plus 50 power limit. So what my theory is, is if at 100% fan speed, zero power limit, and it still power throttles, and if I increase the power limit, and it doesn't power throttle, my theory is at this stage where the previous test, where it was plus power limit, still stock fan speed, it was thermal throttling. However, at stock fan speed and zero power limit, it was power throttling. Now I might be wrong, and if that is the case, feel sorry for the, my finger. Feel free to post your counter argument. But anyways, I'm going to run uh, the benchmark again. We will see the results. It's going to be. I'm going to be back in ten minutes, and if my current testing holds, it should now fall back again at nine hundred something megahertz. And then I should do another test, and with that test, if it doesn't thermal throttle, but it does power throttle at stock, that the text, test after this one should result in 1000 MHz straight up. But that's just a theory. And after this I can do a benchmark with my current overclock settings, just for fun. So yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back, so this has been going on for about another 10 minutes. Let's exit this and try again. Now, if I was right, it should throttle just as much as uh, with uh, stock fan speeds. And if we take a look... Stop with the bloody tooltips. If it'll focus... Bloody camera. There we go. I'm really sorry. Oh looky there, it's throttling, and those are the settings, so 
We're going to try the same with uh, plus 50. So as we saw, it throttled. So let's go back to the benchmark and let's try again. So if it doesn't follow here, I would say I have pretty solid evidence that at stock settings the R9 Nano does not pow power or it does not thermal throttle, but it does power throttle. But th that's of course also going to depend on your ambient temperature, of course, right now. I should have started off with this. Sorry, right now. My ambient inside temperature, sorry about the outside temperature, it's kind of broke. But the inside temperature is 18.1 degrees Celsius. So, uh, if you are living in a place with 30 degrees Celsius ambient temperature, chances are it's going to thermal throttle. But anyways, I'll leave that in the conclusion. So yeah, I'll be back in about 10 minutes my time, and we'll see the result, and then I'll go do another run with my overclocked settings, just for fun, to see the results of the core clocks. But yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, test has been going on for about 10 minutes again. So this test should be conclusive, I believe, but if you don't believe the results of this one, the next ones will most definitely be conclusive. So, where I use the overclock on. Okay. So, apart from this little dip, it's not focusing, is it? Come on, focus, you can do it. The camera that couldn't, apparently. There we go. Thousand, thousand, there's a dip there, very large dip. But that's the exception rather than the rule. 70 degrees Celsius, thousand megahertz. I forgot to check the temperature. GPU usage isn't 100% all the way, but for the most part it's 100%. So yeah, that's pretty conclusive, but there's my overclock settings. I'm going to use user-defined fan controls. Um, is auto on? That's auto, I believe. So... If those weren't, results weren't conclusive enough, those are my overclock settings. I'll be doing the same benchmark with those settings. As you can see here is the benchmark again. So if this result, I believe, I believe the following results that we just had, the result we just had, is conclusive enough. But if you're still in doubt, this test is supposed to be the final nail in the coffin to prove that at stock the nano power throttles and not thermal throttles, but I'll continue on that in the conclusion. So I'll be right back again. And we're ready to see the final results, so this one has been running a bit longer than 10 minutes, I believe. My overclocked results. And let's see. Let's take a look. It's focused and... It's running about 1040. So... What can we conclude with that? It's running 1040 with those settings. GPU usage, for the most part, 100%. I believe my CPU might be limiting it a bit. It's a FX8320 overclocked at 4.3 GHz, I believe, at the moment. Or 4.4. 4.5, I mean, either 4.3 or 4.5. I can't exactly remember. Uh, let's see. G CPU, 4.5 uh, gigahertz. So, just to confirm, R9 Nano, stock clocks, custom loop, specs are also in the description. So, what can I conclude it with? So, the conclusion is basically that, uh, well, let me turn the cam, use the front camera so that I can go to the conclusion, so be right back. Mushy beard. But anyway, so the conclusion. As you saw, even with overclocked, so higher than 1000 MHz, it wasn't throttling at, uh, 
at stock settings, it was throttling, but it was still debatable, looking only at the stock f settings, that it was pow um, thermal throttling. But when we increased the power limit, it was still throttling, but not as much. So, and the temperatures increased by 4 degrees. Now, if it was power throttling at 74 degrees Celsius, chances are the power throttling or thermal throttling would cause it to throttle even more, even if the power limit was increased. So the clocks would be even lower. That's how I imagine it would happen, at least. I might be wrong, please correct me in the comments if I am wrong. But it it didn't. The clocks increased by about, was it 80, 80 megahertz? Which is a significant increase. Now, when we did the same with 100% fan, we eliminated, elimi sorry, eliminated thermal throttling entirely. And we still saw the same throttling at stock. Except for the fan speed, of course. It was still throttling by a, almost, by about 100 MHz, let's say. A bit less. So, and at 50%, plus 50% power limit, it wasn't throttling. And my overclock plotting to settings, overclock settings, you could still see it hit 1040 MHz. So, and the temperatures were what? Granted, it's a custom fan curve, I'll admit that, but the temperatures were still 75 degrees. So, following that, those results, it's impossible for me to see how it can be thermal, thermal throttling at 74 degrees Celsius when it can hit even higher than 900 megahertz at higher temperatures with hitting 78 degrees Celsius while hitting 980 roughly megahertz but if you had stock power limits it was hitting about 920 so 60 let's say 60 megahertz higher my apologies for the inaccuracies this isn't the most scientific test I'll admit but either way still difference of 60 megahertz and the only difference was the power limits I'm not saying well, actually, I am saying this. At stock, the nano, depending on... Um, I lost my words here, sorry. Depending on idle temperatures or ambient temperature. Here it's about 20 degrees Celsius right now. The nano does not throttle. It does not thermal throttle at stock. Power throttling it does. And this, it power throttles because it's a large die. 4096 stream processors. They're keeping it at 175 TDP, I believe. And to be able to hit that power limit, they have to power throttle it at, at stock. So that's how the Nano is so power efficient, if you want. But that also means that increasing the power limit, doing nothing more, grants you a lot of free performance. So really, that's... The proof is in the pudding. At stock, my conclusion at least, and feel free to post it if I'm wrong. The R9 Nano does not form thermal throttle at stock. So thank you all for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time. Bye.